hope you guys are all doing well and welcome back to another presentation today we're going to be discussing fluid volume okay so we're going to be talking about too much fluid in the body as well as too little fluid in the body and the signs and symptoms as well as treatment okay now a little introduction both our electrolytes and fluid, which we'll be discussing today, they help maintain balance within our bodies, also termed homeostasis. 55% of the female bodies composed of water, while 65% of the male bodies composed of water. So more than half of our bodies is composed of water, guys. Also, there's different types of fluids within our bodies, and two of them is our extracellular fluid, which is found outside of cells, and the intracellular fluid, which is found within cells, okay? These two fluids are separated by a capillary wall, and also a cell membrane. Now the membrane is going to be highly permeable and this permeability allows it for the shifting of fluid into as well as out of cells, okay? And this just helps maintain that balance we need, okay guys? We're gonna talk about the body's fluid intake and output. And our fluid balance is regulated by fluid intake and output and it should be equal, guys. So whatever we put in, we want to get out. So there's an average of about 2,500 milliliters of fluid that is processed daily. So we intake fluids through processes such as eating, drinking, and also something called cellular respiration. Now, cellular respiration is the process in which ATP is made and the byproduct of ATP is water. For those of you not familiar with ATP, also known as adenosine triphosphate, it is what the body uses as energy and for various cellular processes. Now, our output of fluid is by urine, stool, sweat, and through expiration, which is when we exhale the air. So it's important to know that fluid usually moves down its pressure gradient from that of a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And this just helps maintain that balance within our bodies. And here are three terms that describe the process, okay? Now, osmosis, this is our first term and it, and it describes the movement of water, okay? H2O from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Next is diffusion, and this describes the movement of molecules, not water, okay guys? Molecules from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. We're just trying to maintain a balance. Lastly, filtration, and this is the movement of water and dissolved substances across a membrane as a result of a hydrostic pressure, okay? Now, hydrostic pressure is the pressure exerted against vessel walls, by a fluid, okay? So it's the same thing as blood pressure. You can think blood pressure when you hear hydrostic pressure because the more pressure or the more fluid that is against a blood vessel wall, the higher our blood pressure will be, okay? The reverse is true as well. The lower amount of fluid against a vessel wall will result in a lower blood pressure, okay? Okay, here we have a list of things that regulate our fluid and electrolyte balances. Now, the renal system is going to be the primary regulator that maintains homeostasis within our bodies, okay, guys? The renal system. Also, the endocrine system assists in regulation by means of various hormonal release, one being natural natriuretic peptide hormones, also termed NPH. Now, NPH works by increasing blood pressure when our blood pressure is low. Also, there's something called renin, or the renin-angiotensin mechanism. When our blood pressure is low, usually these things are released to increase blood pressure, okay, guys? Now, the respiratory system, on the other hand, regulates fluid and electrolytes by means of respiration. And there's also insensible losses of both fluids and electrolytes by means of our skin in which we sweat, also by diarrhea and emesis. Emesis is just vomiting, all right? We get to the indicators of fluid status. And there are six indicators of fluid status when trying to understand whether someone is lacking fluid, has a normal amount of fluid, or if they have an excessive amount of fluid, okay? So before we discuss them, let me try to get something in your head, guys. Usually when our fluid volume is low, we are going to see an increase in all of these labs, okay? They will be increased because they are not being excreted out and they're gonna be highly concentrated in the fluid. So say we have a low fluid volume within our bodies, we are lacking fluid and fluid is the transport system for various molecules within the body. Therefore, if there's little to no fluid within the body, well, there will be little to no transportation and excretion of these substances. Therefore, they will pile up and that will lead to that increased lab value they will have. Now, the opposite holds true as well. If we have an increase or excess amount of fluid within the body, these labs will be decreased because the more fluid we have, the more transportation and excretion of these substances there will be. 
Now our first indicator is BUN, and BUN stands for bilirubin urea nitrogen, and this measures the nitrogen portion of bilirubin, okay? And bilirubin is a byproduct of red blood cell breakdown. Now BUN's normal value is 8 to 21 milligrams per deciliter, and it serves to measure glomerular function within the kidneys. It also serves as a key indicator for hydration status, okay? Next is creatinine, and creatinine is the byproduct of muscle creatinine phosphate breakdown. Usually creatinine stays constant when muscle mass is constant, okay guys? It's also the better lab to look at when talking about kidney function. So remember bun, although it's looking at the glomerular function, it's also looking at the hydration status. So bun is for hydration status, creatinine is going to be for kidney function, okay? Next is specific gravity and its normal range is 1.005 to 1.030. And specific gravity just measures the dissolved chemicals within urine and it's usually affected by the number and size of particles. Urine osmolality on the other hand is the measurement of urine concentration a high value represents a high concentration and a low value will represent a decreased concentration. Last is our H and H, which is hematocrit and hemoglobin. Now the values will vary based on gender and males will have the higher value compared to females. Hemoglobin is the protein within red blood cells, while hematocrit is the ratio of total red blood cells within blood. The normal range for hemoglobin in males is 14 to 17.3 and in females, it's 11.7 to 15.5 grams per deciliter. As for hematocrit, it's usually measured in a percentage because remember, it's a ratio of red blood cells in blood. Now, here are the two fluid volume imbalances we're gonna be discussing, that of fluid volume deficit, also termed hypovolemia, and that of fluid volume excess, also termed hypervolemia. Okay, okay. so we're gonna start with hypovolemia, and this is low fluid volume, guys, fluid volume deficit. So causes of fluid volume deficit pertain to things such as fluid loss by means of vomiting, suctioning, which happens in the clinical setting, sweating, as well as diarrhea. Also, when we don't consume fluids, this will cause the lack of it. Okay, so drink your water. Hope you guys are staying hydrated and drinking enough fluids. Lastly, fluid shifts within the body, also termed third spacing, can cause hypovolemia. Now our fluids can shift in response to things such as trauma, burns, and liver dysfunctions, okay? And fluid shifts can also cause hypervolemia as well. So we'll see that in a bit. Now the labs that are looked at is our electrolytes as well as the indicators we discussed previously. So the manifestations seen are going to reflect fluid volume decline, guys. We're going to see things such as weight loss because there's decreased fluid in the body, which means they weigh less. We're going to see decreased skin turker, which refers to decreased elasticity of the skin. Also, we're going to see concentrated urine output, which reflects an increased specific gravity and osmolality in urine. So the particles are going to be very concentrated. Speaking of urine, we're going to see something called oliguria, which is just a decreased urine output. Now we'll see this oliguria because we have a decreased amount of fluid within the body. Therefore, there's nothing to excrete. Moreover, we will see polydipsia. And this is just excessive thirst as well as dry mucous membranes will be manifested, guys. There is no fluid to properly hydrate the mucous membranes. Therefore, they will be dry. Also, veins will be non-palpable and pulses will be diminished okay because of the decreased fluid volume this will also cause hypotension or low blood pressure now if hypovolemia is severe it can lead to something very serious called shock or hypovolemic shock and when hypovolemic shock occurs the individual's heart rate will spike and their blood pressure will drop okay now this happens due to the very low fluid volume when fluid is low, pressure is low, and the heart will increase in beats to compensate for the loss of the low fluid, okay? Pretty much the heart is trying to expel blood quicker. That way it can circulate and replace what is missing. So it's kind of a compensatory mechanism. You can think of it like that. We get to the medical management, and we're going to start with identifying the cause of the problem. That way it can be corrected. Also, we're going to want to monitor this person's intake and output of fluids to ensure proper ingestion and elimination is occurring. Remember, we want equal I's and O's. Also, IV isotonic solutions will be implemented because isotonic IV solutions, such as normal saline and lactated ringers, they are used to increase and maintain fluid volume within the body, okay? They allow for that vascular expansion, you could think, which will help with circulation and hydration. Nursing management now is going to focus on collecting the patient's history as well as proper assessments will be done to make sure there are no further complications. 
we're going to want to monitor those vital signs as well because checking the pulse and blood pressure along with the respiratory rate will help to see if our medical management is being therapeutic okay guys remember these patients are going to be hypotensive so we will want to see if the blood pressure is increasing due to the isotonic solutions they are being put on also nursing management is going to focus on checking those mucous membranes as well as the skin turker guys moving along lab values will also be looked at and being that we put these patients on an isotonic solution we will want to see if the values are returning to normal because when we are hypovolemic it's more than likely these values will be high as we mentioned so giving fluids will help return them back to normal now nurses are going to monitor the input and output as well as implement daily weights Remember, daily weights ensure that these patients are not losing more weight, which would point to even being more hypovolemic. So daily weights will also ensure that the individual's fluid volume is increasing, furthermore, increasing their body weight, okay? More fluid, more weight, less fluid, less weight. Now, this is going to be key. It's going to be important to monitor the patient when they are on isotonic IV fluids because too much of it can cause our next complication, which is hypervolemia. So hypervolemia is fluid volume overload, guys. Before in hypovolemia, all of the labs were increased due to a decreased fluid volume. Now here in hypervolemia, the lab values will be decreased because of an increased fluid volume. So fluid and lab values think they have an inverse relationship when we're discussing this unit okay there's other disorders we'll talk about soon such as diabetes insipidus and symptom of inappropriate diuretic hormone those are an exception causes of hypervolemia are things such as increased water and sodium retention also heart failure can cause hypervolemia because when the blood stops pumping blood will then pool in the lungs further classified as pulmonary congestion it can also cause something called peripheral congestion and this is the pooling of blood in the systemic circuit guys now steroids also termed corticosteroids can cause increased fluid and of course when we intake too much fluid this will cause an increased fluid volume within the body the labs like that are going to be the same of course and remember guys it is more than likely that they are going to be low in value because we have too much fluid in the body now the manifestations will reflect over hydration so there will be weight gain and edema due to this increased fluid and we're also going to hear an audible s3 and we do not want to hear this s3 upon auscultation guys because it's the third heart sound the heart should have two sounds which is the lub and the dub which is just s1 and s2 moreover in hypervolemia we are going to see polyuria which is an increase urine output because there's too much fluid also ascites may be seen and this is just a fluid buildup within the abdominal cavity okay they shift it out and it's pooling in the abdominal cavity now the respiratory symptoms we will see will reflect fluid in the lungs which will be manifested as crackles within the lungs so upon auscultation we will hear these crackles we will also see tachypnic respirations and this increased fluid will cause labored breathing term dyspnea okay guys dyspnea is labored breathing Thing. Lastly, something called JVD, also termed jugular vein distension, may be seen if there is an excessive, excessive amount of volume, okay? There will be fluid volume buildup within the jugular vein. Now, here's an image of the JVD and edema, okay? So, you can see the vein in the neck is filled with fluid and it's popping out of the neck. On the other hand, edema can either be pitting or non-pitting. Pitting is the example I used and you see what is circled in the top right as an example. So if you press into these individual skin and remove your hand or finger, this indentation will either stay or dissipate or not be there at all based on the amount of fluid present under the skin. In this case, there is a lot of fluid, therefore it is pitting edema. It's going to stay there when you take your finger or hand away. And we get to the medical management, which will focus on restricting fluids because there's already too much within the body. Also, we're going to want to discontinue any IV fluids that may be running because they will increase fluid volume even more. We don't want that. Diuretics now, they'll be used to get rid of the fluid in the body, okay? So we're going to want to give diuretics. Now, it's going to be important to monitor the electrolytes as well when giving the diuretics because, guys, remember, when we lose fluid, we're also losing electrolytes. So monitoring electrolytes such as potassium and sodium are going to be vital because we don't want to prevent, you know, any more complications such as hypokalemia or hyponatremia, low potassium, low sodium. The nursing management now starts with collecting that history 
and the history collection checks for any recent illnesses or previous health issues along with the medications being currently used. Physical assessments are going to be important because we want to make sure that when auscultating the lungs we don't want to hear any crackles and we don't want to hear that S3 heart sound when auscultating the heart. Also neurological assessments will be important because a buildup of fluid can cause neurological impairments. An excessive, excessive amount of fluid can also lead to an altered mental status. Okay, guys. Now, daily weights in this case will be done to ensure that the patient is losing the weight and losing the fluid. And lastly, calculating the I's and O's is going to be important to make sure that proper intake and output is within range and is equal. Okay, guys. And we are done with this topic, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. This video hopefully gave you all a better understanding of fluid imbalances. Definitely stay tuned. This is going to give you a whole lot of info for more videos to come. Anyway, guys, stay hydrated, stay positive, and I will see you guys in a bit.